wouldn't it be nice if there was a way to reduce the amount of bugs in your code while also making it more secure without writing any additional code? I know it sounds too good to be true, but it's actually a feature built into JavaScript. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And I know I teased you a little bit about this amazing feature, but this amazing feature is just called strict mode in JavaScript. You may have heard the terminology before, but in order to truly understand how important it is and how you can actually use it, that's what this video is going to be all about. So the very first thing I want to talk about is the different ways to get into strict mode, and then we can talk about the advantages of a strict mode because it really improves the security of your code and also makes it much less likely for you to write bugs. So there are two ways to manually enter strict mode in JavaScript. The first way and probably the most common is just adding the text use strict at the top of any file. It has to be before any other code. So just put that inside of a string like that. And now all the code that you write inside your JavaScript file is going to be using this strict mode, which has extra security and bug prevention methods built in. Another way to do this manually is if you have a function, we'll just call this sum takes a and b, what we could do is we could use this exact same string, put it at the top of our function, and now all the code specifically in this function is going to be in that strict mode. Now I generally wouldn't recommend doing this because it doesn't really make sense to make one function strict. It makes more sense to have your entire file be strict. So if you're going to manually enter strict mode, I recommend doing it like this at the top of your code. But there are two other ways to automatically enter strict mode without you having to do any of this weird string stuff. The first way that you can automatically enter strict mode is any time that you're writing class-based code in JavaScript. Everything inside of a class is automatically inside of strict mode without you having to do any type of manual designation yourself. So if you're using classes, you're already using strict mode. The other way you can automatically enter strict mode is actually when you import your JavaScript file. If you come in here and you set the type equal to module for your JavaScript file, that is again going to put all the code inside that JavaScript file into strict mode automatically. And personally, I highly recommend using modules when you're working with JavaScript. And if you're unfamiliar with them, I'm going to have a video linked in the cards and description about modules in JavaScript, but it's a much easier way to write JavaScript code. And again, it's going to automatically enter you into strict mode. So that's even one more reason to use modules. So that covers all the main ways to get into strict mode. I'd recommend the module way if you can, but if you can't use modules, then just put the text use strict at the top of your file. Now I want to talk about the different ways that strict mode can help you. And there's eight specific ways that I want to talk about. The first few are going to be covering different ways they can help prevent bugs. So let's just comment this out. So we're no longer in strict mode. We'll just get rid of that line of code. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to set it equal to value. And then I'm going to come down here and we're just going to do something with that variable. We're going to change the value to 10 and then I'm going to console.log out my variable. And now if we come over here, you can see that the value is still value. The reason for this is because I made a typo over here. I typed variable instead of variable. And the only reason that this is actually technically underlined is because I have a spell checker built into my browser. If I change this to a word that's actually spelled correctly, you can see that that error goes away. So this is just for a spell checker I have built in, but you can see there's no indication that I created an error here. There's no anything at all. It's working just fine. You can see our code is working. There's no errors. And that's because when you're outside of strict mode, if you define a variable, any variable, it doesn't matter if it's a typo or if you just, you know, change this to busy, for example, just a random word, it's going to automatically put that on the window object or the global object. So if I come in here and I say window.busy, you can see that that prints out the value of 10. Or when I had this misspelled like this, really all that's doing is it's defining a variable on the window object and giving it that specific value. This is generally not something that we want to have happen. So if we're inside of strict mode, so I just come in here, use strict, you can see now we're getting an error. Instead of just letting the code work and defining this variable automatically, it's throwing an error and saying, hey, you didn't spell this right. You probably meant to spell this differently or you meant to do something else. We're gonna throw an error for you so you know that this is an issue. Now, another really great thing that strict mode does, if we just go out of it real quick, is you know for a fact that things like undefined are already defined variables, but when we're outside of strict mode, we can actually set that value to 10, for example, and you can see that no error is thrown. Now, if I console log undefined, you can see that it's still printing out undefined. And if I go window.undefined, you can see it's still printing out undefined. So this code right here doesn't actually do anything, but it's wrong. Like whatever I think this should be doing, it's not actually happening. Same thing with like NAN, I could set that to 10. No errors are being thrown, but obviously this code does nothing. If I'm in strict mode, this is gonna throw an error just saying, hey, these things are read only. You can't redefine undefined or not a number. Those are read only, so you can't change them. And speaking of read only, it allows you to do a lot of stuff related to read only. So let's just create an object here. We're gonna make it an empty object. 
And what I can do is I can use this fancy kind of terminology called define property. And I can say on my object, I want to define a property called read only. And to make this read only, I can say that it's going to be a writable property with the value of false. And let's just give it a value of 10. So now if I just console.log my object, you can see that it has this read only value that has a value of 10. And if I come in here and I try to say object.readonly equals 15 and save, you'll notice it doesn't update the property, but it also doesn't throw an error. It should probably throw an error being like, hey, you tried to define this read only value. When we enter into strict mode, this throws an error like it properly should. And speaking of this read only property, we can do the same thing with like getters and setters. So if I come in here and I say get read only return 10, it doesn't have a way to set this value because it's only a getter. So if I just come down here and get the value for that, you can see it prints out 10, no errors at all. When I enter into strict mode, we get an error saying, hey, you cannot set this value right here. Another similar thing that it prevents us from doing is deleting things that are not able to be deleted. So I come in here and I say, I want to delete the object dot prototype. You can't ever delete the prototype of an object. For example, you can see I'm getting an error while when I'm not in strict mode, this works just fine. There's no error at all. So again, this is just preventing you from doing things that either a just don't work or b give you unexpected results. Like when you're setting different variable names, another instance of this like unexpected results is what happens if you create a function. So let's say I'm going to create a function, I'm just going to call it combine. It's going to take in the properties a, a and C. And this is just me making a typo. I accidentally typed this value wrong. I accidentally put a second A in there instead of a B. And then down here, I'm just going to return A, A, and C. And let's just console.log out the return of calling that combine function with one, two, and three. What would you expect the result of this to be? Well, if we run this, it's going to run just fine. And the return value here is two, two, and three. And that's because normally when you're not in strict mode, if you define two different variables with the same name, it's just going to take the value of whatever the last variable is, in our case two, and assign it to all of these different values. So that's how that's working. But of course, this is not correct. I mean, maybe it's correct, but this is not probably what you want to have happen. So if we enter into strict mode, instead of just doing the random stuff it did before, it's going to throw an error being like, hey, you probably shouldn't have a as a variable twice. That doesn't make any sense at all. Now, another really important one is something that you probably have never actually realized why this is the case. But if you try to put a zero in front of a number and we're in strict mode, this is going to throw an error. So if I come in here and I just say console.log 015, you should think this would log out 15. When I save, we're actually getting an error. And the reason for that is because when you're not in strict mode, what happens is this actually, when you put a zero in front, is using a base eight number, so like an octal numbering system. Same thing if like I put OX, that's going to be using hexadecimal as my numbering system. When I put an O in front of a number in JavaScript, by default, it uses eight base numbering systems, which is why we get 13 being printed here because this one stands for an eight. Eight plus five is 13. Now, normally when you're defining an octal number, you would use a zero followed by the O character, and that is going to be how you define an octal number. But for some reason, when JavaScript was created, they just said, oh, you know, if you put a zero, it's going to be octal by default. Now, if you're in strict mode, it prevents you from doing this because, hey, it's saying, you know what, you probably meant to write 15. You probably didn't want this to be a base eight number. So we're going to throw an error just so you know not to do this. If you technically wanted it to be a base eight number, put the O in there and it'll be base eight. Otherwise, just don't have a leading zero in front of any of your JavaScript numbers. And if you're in strict mode, it's going to make sure that you don't do that by accident. Now, the final kind of mistake it prevents you from causing before we jump into some more of the security based stuff is that if I just have, for example, the value of string, you know, this is a type inside of JavaScript, or if I just like get a string with the value of string, we'll just say value here. This is a string. And let's say I wanted to define a property on that. I can say prop equals 10. And I can just say console.log, you know, value, I'm logging out value or whatever. But this doesn't make any sense. This is a primitive value. I can't like say value.prop and get whatever this thing is because even though I set it up here, this string is a primitive value. It doesn't have any connection anywhere. I just can't set properties on primitive values. Even if we come in here and we say, for example, const, whoops, v equals value. And I come down here and I change this to be v. And I change this to be V, you can see still that's not locking out 10, but it's not throwing me any errors either. And that's again, because I'm not in strict mode. If I move into strict mode, we're now going to get an error that it says essentially anytime you try to define a property on a primitive value. So like a string or a number or a Boolean or anything like that, it's going to throw you an error. Essentially, you can only define properties on things that are not primitive values. So things like objects, that's going to work just fine. Now, the main security thing that strict mode does for us is if we're inside of a function, let's just say function sum a and b, and we're just going to return 
a plus b. And I'm also inside of here just going to do a quick console.log of whatever the this property is. And I'm going to call that function with the value one and two. You can see the console log for this is returning to me the entire window object. Essentially, it's just the entire global object inside of this. It's the same thing that this is out here. So if I just do a quick console.log of this right before I call my sum function, you can see it returns to me the exact same giant window object. Now, if we're inside of strict mode, this is actually a different behavior though. When we console log this up here instead of our sum, you'll notice it defaults to undefined. Even though the this variable next to sum is the full window object like this, when we're inside of a function, it only lets us access undefined as the this value unless we specifically say that we want to bind a property. So I could say like bind this, and now what that's going to do is it's going to bind that window object. And I just need to make sure that I do this properly. Here we go, sum.bind this, and then call the function. Now you can see it's done that, or I can bind anything. I can bind the value 10, and now this is the value of 10. So if I specifically want to bind a specific value to use, I can, otherwise it's going to pass down undefined. Now the reason this is a good security feature is because you don't want to expose the window object all over the place whenever you're writing code. Sometimes you want to prevent certain things from using the window object, like Chrome extensions are a good example of this. It's really hard to get the window object unless you're in specific scenarios. And there's other instances where you just don't want that polluting all of your different this namespacing. So it's kind of nice that it makes sure it doesn't pass this along by default, because most of the time you don't actually need it. Now the final thing I want to talk about is also going to be dealing with functions. So let's do this sum function here, but I'm going to return two different results. The first one is going to be adding together A and B, and then we're going to use this arguments keyword to get arguments 0 plus arguments of 1. And this should return to me the exact same thing. If I just do a console.log sum of 1 and 2, you can see when I save this, both these values have 3, so 3 and 3, just like we would expect. But what happens if I change the value A here to 10? What's going to happen? Let's first do this not in strict mode, and then we'll do it in strict mode after. When I change the value to 10, you'll notice that everything updates, 12 and 12. So when I change the value of A, it's also changing the value inside of the arguments array. And this arguments array is just the arguments you pass into the function. While when we're in strict mode, this is different. When you change the value of A, it's not actually updating this arguments array, and instead it's just changing the local value of that A variable. So now you can see we get 12 for when we add you know, 10 plus 2, and this one is giving us 3 because it's taking the original 1 we passed in and adding it to 3. This is a nice feature that's being added. For the most part, I don't use arguments ever, but if you did, it really doesn't make sense that this arguments array would change when you change a variable locally inside of a function. I really hope this video makes you excited to start trying out strict mode, and if you want to try it out, I recommend using modules, and I have a great video on JavaScript modules. It's going to be linked right over here. With that said, thank you very much for watching, and have a good day.